Question 1. What is the origin of the band? Well, the band Muslim Gauze started around about 1983 when I was a member of another band and I left to pursue my own musical ideas which were politically influenced by certain events which were happening around the world. Question two, when did the band start? As I've said, it was around 1983. And question three, what is the source of the name of Muslim Gauze? Or the name or the word Muslim? It, it's, it's a type of not only a religion, but also it's a very thin material which is gauze. So, the, so putting the two words together was, was quite natural. Muslim is a gauze, Muslim gauze, and it also reflects my interest in a, a particular area of the world, a very troubled area of the world, an area of the world which will quite soon in the, in the very near future will affect virtually the whole world when that particular area really will explode. Question four, how many in the band? Well again, it's, it's, it's a kind of mirage I, I throw up as Muslim God as a band because it's not the band, it, it's just me. Who, I do everything concerned with the music and artwork and release the whole label that the music is released on, everything is me but I, I do want to throw up the image that it, it is an actual band in itself Question 5 If others are yourself what musical background finally surfaces Muslim Gauze? Um, well the whole music is politically influenced before a sound is made. That's the background. Um, I, I think I, I would make some sort of music if it wasn't for the political situations, but they really do um, influence the type of music I do. The sounds I use, the ideas I use, they, they really are affected by personal beliefs. Question six, what came first, the music or the political interest? Well, Muslim Gauze in particular is the political interest. Um, perhaps I, I, I should say the political in interest is the Palestinian situation, the Afghanistan situation, Iran, the Gulf War, there's, there's, those are the main three political pillars or the backbone of Muslim gods. It's trying through music to bring these situations more in prominence to people. Say somebody who likes a piece of music buys the album and, and, and sees the titles and the the influences of the music point into these themes and these people just just may look into it and hopefully change their their ideals about it because I think people seem to have set media fed images of, of these places and and to, I really need and want people to start thinking about these political and like the world areas, start thinking about them more because they really, really are important. Question six What came first, the music at all? Well, we've done that, so question seven Numerous releases, when and how were they financed? Well, each release finances the next release. Um, if an album does not sell, then that is it, I think, basically. Um, they work on a very tight shoestring budget. It really is. It's, it's one release, and this is the next. Um, we we paid for the whole pressings, all the sleeves, everything. 
from Limited 1, 2 and 3 um, and from Limited 4, 5 and 6 we've secured a manufacturing and distribution deal with the cartel in England which really does help out Question 8 Limited 4, Hajj brought a distinct change in your musical refinements what caused this? Yes, um, I, th I think we started to find the path that we were searching for musically on the Hajj album. Before that, I, I did feel that each album was a bit patchy and some of the ideas were not too refined, and as you say in the question. But now from that album on was the last two or three albums we've, we've found and improved upon the area of music that I, I want to produce and particularly the new album we've um, we started to hit the nail on the head I think I think we've, we've, we're starting to produce the, the type of music that Muslim Gars wants to release and I do like the new album I think I, I really it is the best material that's been released so far question 9 is each album a progression of ideas or musical development? Certainly it is, yes. We have progressed. The band Muslim Gars has progressed. Um, musically, definitely. There's no question about that. And also in, in, in putting over a, a political message, I, I feel we've, we've resisted the preaching approach, which I, I really did want. There's nothing worse than somebody preaching. That's why I, I feel that we benefit through there being no songs or lyrics where you can preach at people. There's, there's a piece of music and it's, it's been given a title which points you in a direction. It doesn't tell you to think a certain way about a piece of music. You can just take the piece of music and leave it at that. But I do hope that the title points you in a certain direction and that you're interested in that direction. Question 10. Can you explain the album titles, tracks, or are they to suit your band's name and sound? Well, each piece of music is influenced by a certain event Gulf War, um, certain countries like Iran and Libya and Afghanistan, there is definite themes behind every piece of music, every album title, the whole thing that Muslim girls produce, there is something behind it. Question 11, does Muslim girls perform live? Have you ever wanted to tour, if so possible, Australia? Muslim Girls have only ever done one live performance. That was last year in Holland. Um, the only reason we agreed to perform was because we were asked to do so, specifically asked to perform at this particular three band event. And one of the bands played with me as one of them goes. Again, it was a very, very weird experience. The first time live, I um, I don't particularly want to, to play live again, actually. It was a detached feeling where you have to think about so many things at once. It was a confused blur, and I can't really remember much about it. Um, I don't really think it was it was that good because the preparation just wasn't there. I mean, I would, I would have liked large backdrops and projections and some sort of a dance troupe and things like that. But I mean, the expense was just too much, and it was a pretty hastily put on event. Um, I didn't really think much about it. I, I don't think we'll perform live. Not in the near future, anyway. Question 12. 
Has recognition grown with the passing of time or has the same ordinance been maintained? Recognition, not so much recognition, no. Um, we've not grown that much. Um, there's particular areas where we've found a brick wall has been put up in our way, particularly America, where we've we've experienced some. Um, well, I wouldn't I wouldn't say um, it was censorship, but something quite similar. Um, posters not used, distributors dropping out, people having trouble selling things, and again things like this, tapes or written interviews just not being able to find anyone you know um, anyone that will use them it's been quite tough there but other areas certainly Europe has, has um, increased interest seems to be quite a, a wide open area there where certain unusual ideas are very more accepted Are you, question 13, sorry, are you solely a musician or do you work or support yourself? Yes, at, at, at the moment we are solely a musician, solely releasing what we do, um, not really making that much money out of it, virtually nothing. But um, again, it, it, you can't be in this area of music and people be or expect to make money because it, it's, you just don't because it, it's just self-financing if you make some money you tend to plow it into recording the next album most of the well all of the albums so far have been 8-track recorded 8-track bar one which was the Jazz Rattle Arab album which was limited 5 the last album was recorded 24-track and was mixed digital. That took um, quite a bit of money to do. It was something I felt we had to do, was to try and step up the recording facilities and the quality. In actual fact, the end result wasn't that a great improvement on an 8-track. 8-track is very, very raw and spontaneous. and You tend to plan more on when you're working 24-track and my music is, is quite spontaneous and quite a, the ideas are in a live situation we record quite quite live and the clinical planning of, of the 24 track plus the digital as well I don't think it, 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 it um, improved our music question 14 are there other bands that have influenced and bands that now influence your musical style. Well, I, I, I don't tend to listen to all that much of other bands. Certain areas of music are, are, have, have influenced me. Obviously, the Arabic music and Indian and ethnic music. Also, the, the famous German bands of, of the mid-70s which probably all know about, I, I, I still do listen to those. But as, as, as far as music which is made this year, no, because there is, it, it, it's virtually all bland and... Well, it's, it's, it, everything's the same, it's really depressing actually. I mean, living in England, there's, there's so much bland music coming out at you. It's, it's quite depressing. And to find the things that are, I think, that are interesting is quite difficult, actually. Question 15. What instruments do you use? Well, we use virtually anything we can get our hands on, and everything is of use. From top quality instruments down to bits of percussion. I mean, you can hit anything there. I mean, <laughs> you can use anything. And I use anything, anything that's in the studio, anything that I can pick up. I don't own anything, no instruments, nothing. We stay quite flexible in that. And if there's any top quality instruments, I hire it. It's, it's better because 
if you commit yourself to buying a piece of equipment, um, not only have you used the sounds all the time, you can't vary them. Um, you're stuck with it. And there's also the technology side, where technology is, is, is changing all the time. And it's quite stupid to buy anything, actually. Question 16. I notice what sounds like a drum machine on some occasions. It seems to be well masked by acoustic rhythms. Is the drum machine an important fact in your music? Yes, we do use the drum machine, or, or we did. I mean, on, on the early recordings, we we did. We used the drum machine quite heavily. And on the, the the first album I did as Muslim Gars, which was Kabul in '83, we used nothing but a drum machine to see if we could produce a music which used just one drum machine and nothing else. That was a, a just an acoustic or just a, a, an exercise to do. We use it much more. Um, less now. It's it's more of a first step, a backbone of a piece of music, and we we use acoustic rhythms and sounds a lot more now. Hopefully, more so in the future. Um, we're always always trying to try something different. I mean, there's nothing new, but we we always try and approach a rhythm from a different angle, or use something on top of it change it around. Certainly, it's certainly important to us, the drum machine, it's important to virtually everybody, I think. Um, I mean, even the bland, uninteresting music, every everything you hear on the radio uses a drum machine. So, it's an important part to everybody. And I, I, I use it. We use anything that we can get our hands on. Question 17. What is the foundation of your musical sound? Is it the rhythms and Arabic influence? Is it becoming constraining to your music? Constraining, no. No, because there's so much to choose from. I mean, I don't, I don't want to produce Arabic music because there'd be no point. I use the Arabic sounds or style of music only at a starting point. To produce something which you can buy on record, produced by the ethnic people themselves, will be a waste of time. I mean, you can, you can, you can, if you like, steal ideals and rhythms and bits and pieces from different cultures to produce your own music. Certainly, in that in in that respect, it's a it's a foundation. It's a starting point. Question 18a, what do you hope to achieve musically? Um, a different, certainly interest in music, which has a political edge to it, a political backbone, another area to the actual music itself. Achieve, well, we're not really hoping to achieve anything really. We're not producing music to, to achieve anything. I mean, you produce music because you want to produce music. I mean, some people might, may produce music to make money or to get famous. Um, well, I mean, those two areas will never encroach upon Muslim girls. We will never make all that money. We will never achieve widespread fame. Question 18b, what do you want people to feel when they listen to your music? I want to feel that they're listening to something that, again, is worthwhile. That they find something to go on to and listen to the music, the political ideas, the situations, why, Russia invaded Afghanistan, the reasons behind it, what they're doing there, the people they're killing there, why has a Gulf War 
why Iraq started it, etc. Why the Gulf situation is happening. Areas like this, they can think about from the music. They can listen to a piece of music, see the title, wonder what the title is about, find out what the title is about, or the album cover artwork, or the title of the album, find out what it's about, think about why it's called such a thing, investigate that area, hopefully. Whether people do this or not, I have no idea. You just hope that people find a different area to your music. Question 19, what do you hope to achieve politically? <laughs> well, you just hope that, that the political situations resolve themselves. But certainly, I hope that we're doing some good, that some good can come of a person making music which is particularly influenced, but maybe can can change, if not all, in some people's attitude towards a media image of these places. Question 20. Do Palestinian and other Arabic people have access to your music? Well, the Palestinians have very little access to anything. The areas of their own country that they live in, it, in squalor, in virtual concentration camps that Israel has set up for them. People in their own country, in camps, in squalid conditions. So I, I doubt very much whether they'd want to listen is another thing. Maybe they, they, they probably would not. Um, I think they've failed, they've probably got other things to do and, and fight for and to listen to some Western music. They've got their own country to fight for. Question 21. Are you listening to those countries old or new or both music? New? Well, no, not, not, not new music which is coming out of those countries, no. Old, certainly. We listen to a lot of music, very old music from the, those areas of the world certainly and it certainly influences what we do we don't copy it we don't sample it and and, and and pinch it all we don't certainly don't pinch ideas in that way hopefully they influence rhythms but we we don't actually listen to something oh i'll nick that no, i'll pinch that idea i'll sample it i don't do that i don't sample better rhythm in that way Question 24. Is there a high level of creativity in England or is it experimental music still a cottage industry in a light of conservatism? The creativity has always and probably will always be high in England. Um, there's a lot of people making music, a lot of people have, have their own ideas. Experimental music, sir, cottage industry. Yes, it is. Yes. And again, it probably always will be. Because the majority of people's musical outlook seems to be going backward rather than forwards in England. There's a, a lot of dross, a, a dreadful amount of boring music around. It, it, it's sad to see. Again, if you look hard enough, you will find the good music. There are people in every country that are selling the most interesting music from all over the world. You've just got to find them. But it, it, again, you've got the bands themselves, you've got to be in touch with the bands themselves, the people who are producing the music, to get the records off them. Question 25. What is the future for experimental music in England? Hopefully, very good. There's there's the bands that you know about, and hopefully there'll be even more bands coming up that, that will stay in the experimental field. Whether your class and girls is experimental, I don't know. 
I'm being told all the time it's it's hard to to categorize Muslim gods, which is great. You know, people don't know which pigeonhole to put us in, which is which is just terrific. And again, you get stuck in the experimental pigeonhole though. But um, the future, hmm, it's hard. It's again, it's hard to say. It's it's always been quite difficult to sell music in this field. Question twenty six: How does the future look for us and girls? Well, hopefully, we will continue to improve on the music side. If the album. The next album, the album after it doesn't sell, then the support won't be there and we may stop. But I really do want to continue producing political influenced music because those political facts are still there. The political situations which influenced me two to three years ago haven't been resolved and don't look like they will be resolved for years to come. In particular, the Palestinian situation, which is a time bomb. It, it's it's it is not going to get better. I can only see it getting worse because of when the people are in their own country and they don't even run it. They're in camps and bits of land stuck away in the bad parts of of the town, like Gaza. I mean the. Um, Places in South Africa which attain the high level of interest from people in the media, like Soweto. I mean, those areas are luxury compared to what the Palestinians are living in. I mean, Gaza, the West Bank, are truly dreadful places. And there are now parts of Afghanistan through the bombing, which are just the same. And these are facts. And these are the facts which influence the work of Muslim girls. The future, how does the future look for Muslim girls? Well, not very good. I mean, it's, it's, still, it's still only a very small setup. Again, there's good and bad in that. I mean, you can keep control over everything that you do over a, a quite a small setup, when you get larger, you, you tend to lose that, the, the feel and we're in control of virtually every aspect of the release. It's our decision, what comes out. Um, so, I, again, I hope the music does continue to improve, because I think it has. And we're still very excited about what we do. We put everything into it, not only an album, into every piece of music we put whole feelings and whole ideas and influences into it, into producing hopefully a meaningful piece of music. I can't see support by the PLO and certain aspects of Iran and the Gulf War to, to wane at all. These supporting certain, certain of these organisations has, has hindered us in the past and probably will in the future. But so what? 